Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Deja and I'm the artist behind Starstruck Pups Art where I create a lot of dog themed artworks, pet portraits, and really anything that makes me happy for the most part, but that's usually dogs to be honest. Today I'll be painting from one of my favorite movies, Howl's Moving Castle. Did I select this scene because there was a picture of a dog in it? Absolutely. Will I be painting other scenes that don't have dogs in it? Absolutely. While I do want to try to maintain a specific subject with a lot of my art, that doesn't mean that I'm going to hinder my creativity by saying that I'll only paint within a certain subject. Nevertheless, I have always loved the dog from Howl's Moving Castle. His name is Heen and he always looks like he has a bad attitude on his face. Uh, so drawing him was a little bit difficult and I'll admit that the first time I did it, I didn't really like the way his face was looking. So Later on when I paint I'll actually almost completely cover this original sketch that I'm putting down right now and then kind of give it a go with just paints and without a sketch but you'll see that in just a little bit now that I'm done with the sketch part I can actually start to paint in the background the original reference photo has a fully blue sky but I decided to make it a little bit more purple towards the left half just so that it would be easier to cover up the drawing of heat that I currently have down. If I wasn't attempting to cover it up, I personally would have gone with a lighter color scheme, but I'm not unhappy with the use of my color purple. I really love to include purple in my art and just want to roll with the decisions I make instead of always thinking about what better decision I could have made. At this point, I'm gonna start working on the clouds. I've always really enjoyed painting clouds. I've always really enjoyed looking at clouds when I was out on drives or at the park. It's always interested me to see the way that they're shaded and the way they look so different no matter what cloud you look from to the next. None ever really looks the same. Um, but when it comes to me painting clouds, I've always really enjoyed the ability to create a more clear translucent layer by including less color and only letting it blend into the underpainting. Whereas to make the clouds seem more three-dimensional, I add a lot thicker of a white color to show the light actually bouncing off uh, those thick, puffy clouds. At this point, I'm gonna start painting in the scarecrow looking guy. His name is Turniped. Um, he's actually a prince who a witch has put a curse on if you haven't seen the movie. But anyways, when I'm painting these animated characters, it's a lot easier for me to kind of work on them because it doesn't include a lot of color. There's really some basic colors and then some additional shades. Um, so just working on this hat, I'm only working with five separate colors. That's the pink strap, the gray, and then a medium gray and a super dark gray. So nothing crazy. And the same could be said for all of the wood. I have one basic color, then the color for the shadow, same with his jacket. I'm starting here with his basic color and then eventually I'll go in and actually add that shadow color. I'd say that the trickiest thing is actually creating the colors you want and then keeping track of those colors, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward. A super huge shout out to my amazing husband for making me homemade Zeppelis and just brightening up my whole life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. These were delicious. I love a sweet little treat in between, but we're getting back to the painting, starting with this light blue color and then the pink to just create his shirt. Again, just looking back at that reference photo to find these colors and then going ahead and actually adding the line work at this point um, from the parts that you can't really distinguish with just color itself. And we're moving on to the next character. This little guy is named Markle. And if you didn't know, in the dubbed version of Howl's Moving Castle, Josh Hutcherson plays Markle's voice actor. Um, so that is a fun fact that I learned recently. The same Josh Hutcherson that's our bread baking pita in Hunger Games. And I guess this new character in, what's that show called? Or the game Nightmare at Freddy's? Is that it? Five Nights of Freddy's, 12 Nights of Freddy's. 
something of Freddy's. Someone correct me. I'm sure somebody knows about this. But anyways, Josh Hutcherson voices this character. He was super cute um, throughout. So just making sure to do him justice and his outfit. He looks like a little, honestly, he looks like a hobbit. Like this looks like what a hobbit would wear. Um, so loving the outfit, loving his thing. Uh, and now I'm just going to paint it. Okay, I know I said I was just gonna paint at this point, but can we just take a moment to recognize how iconic his fashion sense was that he's wearing this like satchel, merce, fanny pack, like whatever it is, it's giving everything it needs to give and I am supporting Markle on his fashion journey. So glad I ended up getting those detail brushes from Michaels. I could not have done his face as delicately without them. Um, and okay, let's also just take a moment to take in these tights. Go Markle. Moving forward, I am going to just try to paint Heen directly from the reference photo instead of looking at the sketch I made underneath. I didn't really like how narrow his face was and just thought that I was kind of squishing him instead of making him this like more rotund and short guy. So just gonna kind of trust my painting experience here and hope it guides me the right way. I am still using my sketch underneath, but more as a reference of what I don't want to do. The hair I think was in somewhat of a good place, but everything else I just knew I needed to just touch up a little bit. Painting on his hair right now, I just can't help but feeling like I'm putting a really crappy looking toupee on this guy because like if I saw any dog or man walking down with this crazy yellow hair on top of their like mop head, I would be like, okay, let's be so for real right now. <laughs> um, but it was really hard for me to like the way I was painting Heen just because of the way Heen actually looks. He's not necessarily like the cutest dog, so trying to make him a little bit cuter while also sticking to the reference was harder. I think next time that I work on him in my sketchbook, I'm gonna just try to steer a little bit farther away from the reference photo and come up with a version of him that I think is cutest. But for now, I'm just gonna be working on his RBF, I guess, cause this guy always has an attitude. So just being mindful to try to make sure his eyes are both looking in the correct direction and are in the same directional space as his nose is facing. And now that I've done all of the main characters, I can actually start painting the landscape. Recently, I've been really, really enjoying including landscapes in my works because I feel like it really helps me to escape a level of perfectionism I don't normally get to. With landscapes, it's a lot easier for me and my mind to accept that if I just use three to four different colors of greens and swipe the brush in the right way, it may not look exactly photo perfect to a blade of grass, but when someone looks at my painting, it still gives the look of grass. And same with these flowers. They're just dots with two separate colors of paint, but when you look at it from afar, you know that they're supposed to depict flowers. And I hope that one day I'm able to include that a little bit more with my character paintings as well, so that I can stop focusing in so much on all the immediate detailing and start just focusing on how it looks with a little bit more of a step back. For some final details I nearly forgot to include in the painting, I'm just adding Turnip Head's pipe using my detail brush to get that nice thin line. And just like that, I think I am ready to move forward. So I am just carefully pulling this tape off. I was so scared I was going to rip the paper underneath and ruin everything, but I was not led astray. Luckily the paint came off, or the tape should I say, came off beautifully and no paint was harmed in the peeling of this tape. However, after taking off the clip, I realized that I never actually painted the left side of the page. Originally, I thought I was fine with leaving it that way, but the more I looked at it, the more I wanted to change it. So I just went back in with the purple I used, the blue I used, and blend them into each other so that they would look more natural. As of right now, I'm leaving it that way, but I'm thinking I might want to include stars or something else more fun to the left side of it. For now, I'm happy with how it looks, but when I give you guys a sketchbook tour, we'll see if that changed. What do you guys think? 
As always, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more artwork like this, as well as following any of my socials to keep up with my art journey. Catch you next week. Bye.